All right, what is going on, my beautiful people of the world? I hope that you are not in an emotional state of flux like I currently am. I am losing my shit. So just to set this up really quick, I am a very prideful person. I am a person that I don't tolerate badness of myself. I don't care about other people being underachievers. I'm not the kind of person that's like, you need to be the best that you can be at all times. Otherwise, what are you worth to them? Like, I don't care. Live your fucking life. This is about me. Um, so I care very deeply about how I perform in various aspects that matter to me. And the reason why that is, is because for a very long time, basically the entirety of high school, I did not give a flying fuck what I was doing, what was going on, and if I had at that time, if I had the same mentality then as I have now, I would be in a very different position in life, a much better position in life, probably. I mean, obviously there are no guarantees, but the probability of that is significantly higher than where I currently am right now. So, understanding that, I realize, all right, I need to act like this from now on going forward so I do not continue along this line. Thus, I care very much about the status of my schoolwork. I care very much about how people perceive me at my job. I care very, very much about the volunteer uh, stuff that I have been allowed to do in my life and how they perceive me, how you know they understand that I am a quality worker and that anybody that is potentially looking to me in the future to perform higher level tasks along what I've already done volunteer work for that I would be a benefit to whoever that is, thus making my chances of getting a quality job that much higher. I care very much about the quality of my work in all aspects of life. So, I have been working very, very hard to ensure that I maintain as near to perfect of, you know, like, classwork stuff as I possibly can. And, uh, <laughs> the last test... I fucked up. I didn't, uh, the last test we had, I wound up getting a lower grade than I would have wanted. And the reasoning for that is that I did not master one of the concepts. For those of you that have already been through calculus, the whole calculating volume or surface area of uh, a shape or a form revolved around either the Y axis or the X axis. So you use that using, you know, the various formulas. You have the disc method, uh, the just circle method. You have that, what's it's the cylinder method, etc., etc. I did not perfect that I didn't master that it cost me more points than I wanted to lose and because of that I saw that and like I said because I am a prideful individual I was like fuck I cannot accept this I mean obviously I have to accept this but I cannot accept work equivalent to this moving forward so redoubling my efforts I worked mad hard to master everything about this next test everything and I'm going to get into how goddamn mad part of that made me in a bit. But so, I was under the impression that we were going up through the last chapter. We had just started, let's just, so you have the numbers associated with it. We had just started chapter 10. We had one lecture on, not even one full lecture, half of a lecture on chapter 10. So, and I had never heard the teacher mention that chapter 10 was going to be included on the test that we took today. I thought... It would be up to and including all of chapter 9, but chapter 10 would be left off for the next test we have in, you know, two weeks from now. Uh, that was not the case. So I spent all of my time ensuring I had mastered all the previous subjects, going back and ensuring that, you know, just in case something came up that was similar to the problems that I missed on the previous test, I would have them down. I would not struggle with them this time around. I breezed through the test so fast I have never that is the fastest calculus test I have ever taken period right up until the back page and I turned the back page and right there are two questions that are chapter 10 that I did not look at we like I said we had that very brief half of a lecture surrounding it six days and six six days yeah no five days five days have passed since that brief lecture all filled with my either work hours, uh, doing other, you know, stuff around the house, playing Dark Souls 3, even, you know, stuff like that, or alternatively, mostly, 
working on every other aspect of math except for that section. So because of that, despite the fact that, again, I am obscenely confident in my results on every single problem prior to that, but because I never heard her say that chapter 10 was going to be on the test, I was not aware that chapter 10 was supposed to be on the test, because we even had shit due, and we had ten, uh, chapter 10.1 and 10.2 stuff assigned to us, but we were told it is not due, don't worry about it, you don't have to turn it in, you only have to turn in stuff through 9.6. So maybe I maybe I put too much into that statement. Maybe I just inferred from that statement that we were only going through chapter 9.6 and we were not going into chapter 10. And so because of that, I didn't remember anything about chapter 10. It's uh, interval and radiance of convergence. Did not remember. I just All I remember is that there were number lines involved somehow. I don't remember a goddamn thing about how to get it. Don't remember a goddamn thing about how to set it up. Thus, those two problems are blank. And because of that, no matter how, if I did everything as well as I believe I did, which is perfectly, the best score I can get on this test is an 87% because of those two fucking problems. I am fucking livid right now. And then on top of that, uh, to say very simply <laughs> this math class has been kind of a travesty so far like i am you have no idea this is the last level of calculus i have to take I, there are two more levels after this uh i can't remember what the next one is called i remember the one after the next one is called differential calculus um but the one i think the next one is basically all to do with you know adding in the 3d plane so you know like everything we've been doing so far is basically on the x y axis and then in the next level you throw 3d into the mix and now you have a z axis have fun with that i don't have to go on to that and like i said i'm actually very happy because number one we are five sections behind the plan behind where we were supposed to be our teacher has missed Four class periods, which is a lot. That's two entire weeks of lecture on top of also... No, well, actually, I'm sorry. She's missed three. And then one of them, uh, the fourth one, we had a substitute teacher. But so on that day, because we were so far behind, she left what she wanted the substitute teacher to cover. And he came in and he looked at the plan and he was like, okay, I need to ask you guys something because I, 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 I don't think this is right. Have you guys covered any of this? Nope, we have not. Okay, well, she wants me to cover all of this in one day. That's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. I'm going to tell her I'm going to go over the basics, but she should go back and, you know, kind of go back over it to ensure you guys have the fundamental understanding necessary to build on top of it in the future. That never happened. So I basically had to self, on top of that, on top of, you know, all this shit going on, I basically had to self-teach chapters uh sections 9.3 to 9.6 to myself and one of the things that you have to learn in there is how to figure out the remainder of a series and that shit's weird it's a little awkward it requires a lot of kind of grinding through uh just entering numbers and hoping it comes out properly for you like there's no real maybe later on hopefully later on if you ever have to deal with remainders again you learn like an actual definitive way to do it but there are some problems where you just you end there and there's no way to reduce it further there's no way to like you know reduce it to a clear answer and so basically all you can do is be like all right i bet i need to go you know 10 terms in so you figure out the sum of 10 terms in of the series nope that doesn't give me the result i want all right let me try 15 nope i'm still too low all right let me try 50 oh yep that's definitely high enough all right let me go back down to 25 stuff like that so you kind of thankfully you don't have to go like all right let me try one nope let me try two nope let me try three nope let me try four like you can actually kind of narrow it down uh but it's still it's just it's a unnecessary gr well not unnecessary obviously it is necessary but it is a grind and so i had to grind to teach myself how to do it in the first place then i had to grind through a bunch of problems to ensure i had mastered it and guess how many problems required the utilization of that knowledge i have obtained about figuring out the remainders of a series zero that is a hefty part that is a hefty part of two sections of section both 9.3 and 
knowing how to find the remainders and knowing how to get to a specific amount of significant figures in order to get to a like basically what you're doing is that this sum of the series is basically an infinitely repeating uh, decimal like there's it does not end but eventually it gets so small that every addition after that is essentially irrelevant um, and so when you're getting into something like that, you're basically just like, all right, we understand that if you wanted to write this out as if it was pi and just take up, you know, 30 pages of numbers and it's that never going to stop, it's just going to keep going, you could do that if you really wanted to, but you don't really want to. Thus, give me the sum of this series accurate to the first six decimal points. And so then from there, basically what you're trying to do is find a value in that series that is less than, you know, 0 0.000001. I don't even know if I've used the proper amount of zeros there, but that's basically what you're trying to do because obviously now every single value after that is lower than that decimal point. Thus, it will never have a significant factor on everything before it. So you can say, not definitively, because it's not 100% accurate, but you can say with a decent amount of confidence, this is about what this series will uh, result in to this amount of decimal points. Um, and so that's the entire point of it. Anyway, <laughs> point being, I think I, I spent hours on that. I legitimately did. I went, I did the problems in my math lab. I looked at the book context of it in my math lab. I Googled it and looked up additional information about it just to make sure I had it down pat. Then I went and I found more problems to do with it just to ensure that I knew precisely what I was doing. And it resulted in nothing. Nothing used it. We didn't have to use it at all. We'll probably never use it again. Completely wasted time. I'm so goddamn mad. Because the problem is, is I, I feel now because of this test, I feel that A slipping away. I feel that A slipping through my fingers. I don't think it's gonna happen. And because of that, I am mad because I mean you know having a high GPA is all well and good but like getting high grades in high level classes that helps more than just a high GPA like if I took nothing but like entry-level classes that have no prerequisites no real knowledge obtained from them that you can utilize in the real world nothing useful gained from them but hey fuck it I got an A right that is not as important as getting an A in classes like physics or calculus or high level English or, you know, like stuff like that where, you know, this is basically what people determ uh, deem an easy A class versus you better put in some fucking work if you want to succeed in that. And obviously college recruiters and other people that have access to your, you know, school results know that. They understand that getting a high enough grade in this class means a lot. It's very impressive. It means that the person put in work. And so I want to be perceived as the person that put in work. But I can't do that if the work I put in is not included in shit. Fuck! I am just so, like, you have no idea. <laughs> Woo! I'm done. I'm done. Just, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. I'm dying. So, since we're going on the chain of being angry and stuff, let's talk about some arc system works. Uh, <laughs> so, for a very, I mean, for a very long time, obviously, I have been rather negative about the business side of arc system works, and that is not going to change. But it really does occur to me that like this is not something that is relegated only to arc system works in terms of like these are people that make good games i did not particularly care for extend that was a pretty significant factor uh both extends really that and that alone was a pretty significant factor of why i did not buy those games because i just i thought the balanced decisions the balanced design overall their entire goal for how characters should work and how things should uh, be changed in comparison to previous versions was very boring and made the game more dull than it already was which I don't think that should never I don't think it, that's the mark of a bad game designer if you take something and you create something from it and that product winds up being less fun 
that's that's the mark that's the mark of failure really if you're being perfectly honest that's so just i'm calling it out right now blaze blue developers are failing i'm not even gonna get into that shit but you know it's a fun thing to say right it's like a buzzword title that would catch attention anyway um but that's not the significant reason of why i did not purchase that game because obviously i still played it i did enjoy it to a degree as much as a person that's never played a fighting game on pad before can enjoy a fighting game on pad holy shit that was miserable <laughs> anyway um so but the reason why i am kind of very iffy about future arc system works releases are the is the business side of everything the business arrangements they make and the decisions that they make surrounding their business that have nothing to do with the game itself outside of you know like when it gets released or how it's treated how much it's priced at that kind of thing but the game play itself is unaffected by all of these factors and if i was only to evaluate these games by their gameplay i would purchase them but but the issue stems from the like so this all kind of it came back fresh into my mind uh when i looked at guilty gear xr revelator because I was interested in getting that. Like, I mean, you know, you saw me kind of come back to it for a little bit to try and learn chip. That did not work out. But I'm interested in Jacko. Uh, I would like to try out um, Dizzy in the future whenever she comes out, if provided she's not a $7 DLC character. Um, and I would, so, and all else fails, I would like to learn Sin and actually truly get into the game. Now, Granted, you know, Guilty Gear is not on the top of my list of games that I enjoy from Arc System Works. I don't think it's a bad game at all. Everything that I am about to say is not, you know, like a definitive flaw with the game. It is purely opinion from my end. I don't like how so many characters are based around Projectile Oki being able to do things freely, getting a knockdown plus free offense. Like, a knockdown is enough it is advantage enough to you without also being able to get completely free offense from it based upon projectiles and so many characters are built around that like having a character that's somewhat of a glass cannon milia is a very extreme example of this milia is considered one of the best characters in the game uh but i think a character like her is a valid design to have some level of projectile oki maybe not having you know like four different methods where she has the fucking disc she has the orb she has her super like what the f why so many anyway but then you have characters like eno eno goddamn has like i'm sorry is it eno i'm pretty sure it's eno you have a character like eno who has ridiculous up down mix up thanks to her dash high low mix up not up down what the fuck am i saying ridiculous high low mix up but then she also has a projectile on top of that which can give her like three or four high low mix ups in a row if she sets it up meaty enough that's fucking ridiculous uh you have characters like soul his normals his damage he gets projectile oki on top of it holy shit a character like kai is a good character to have his kind of projectile oki he doesn't have insane mix-up he is just a very solid neutral and pressure based character thus i do not find any significant design flaw in him having projectile oki but it's just so many characters have it so many almost all of them the only characters even chip technically has it actually his super his where he throws out like 10 15 kunai all in the air that shit gives him broken mix up but at least it requires meter at least you have that do i think he needs it absolutely not but at least he cannot just do it he can't just get a combo excuse me <coughs> he cannot just get a combo go nuts get a knockdown and then get that oki for free again it does cost him something to do it so many characters in the game. Elfeld's grenade? What the fuck was the design choice behind that? Who thought that shit was fair? It's, you know, so there's a lot of it where I just kind of don't really disagree with the design choices of it. And because I don't like that particularly aspect, that particular aspect of design, it limits my 
choice of character because I don't want to use a character that acts like that. But nor do I want to neuter myself and just be like, oh, fuck it, I'll just play Milia, but I'll never use her projectile Oki. Oh, I'll use El Felt, but I'll just never use her grenade. Like, that's ridiculous. That would be stupid. Why would you neuter yourself with a character intentionally? No, if I'm going to use a character, I am going to use them to their full potential. So I need to find a character I'm comfortable with. And Guilty Gear really didn't supply that. I don't know why I just went off on all of that. We're here to talk about the business, not the game. Point being, you can pre-order the game off of PSN on the PS4. And in doing so, you get access to a demo version of Revelator that features offline versus training mode, and I think story mode, maybe, that's subtitled. I'm not sure about that one. But I'm pretty sure it has at least one more offline mode on top of it that you have access to in the demo version. And it features all of the characters currently in arcade, so it doesn't have Raven or Coom. And you, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be pronounced Cum, but I will never know. His name is Coom. <laughs> Pure and simple. We're, no debate there. Just shut up. Um, does not have those two characters. So, I went to look at it. I went to see, you know, like, alright, let me you know, check this out. Let me pre-order it. I'd like to, you know, try a little bit of Jacko in training mode. See if I'm comfortable with her. See if she's a character I want to pursue in the future. Or if I want to just say right at the beginning, I'm sticking with Sin. Fuck it. Let me finally learn this character. It's time for me to stop being goddamn lazy and making excuses and play this game that actually maintains a consistent, somewhat active community in contrast to every single other anime game out there. It is past time for me to learn this goddamn game. So when I looked at it, got to the page. Pre-order Guilty Gear XR Revelator. $59.99. Well, we just got to a sticky point. <laughs> this is a game that has featured remarkably little change in its gameplay. From There's a few system mechanical changes. You have that new Blitz Charge thing going on. Uh, I know there were some other changes. I haven't really paid explicit attention to them enough to be able to discuss them and talk about them and you know actually know that I'm correct on them so I'm not even going to get into it but I do know there have been a few mechanical changes to the system but character wise very very little has been changed which I completely agree with I think it is much better to let a game ride out at least for a while make little tweaks here or there and not completely alter the game that requires every single player with every single character to learn entirely new combo routes every single goddamn time a new game comes out. Are you seeing a trend here? God damn it, it's so irritating. Um, but so I completely agree with that and I completely support that. And I'm not arguing that like because there are so little changes to the game that it does not deserve to be full price. Here's the problem. This is a game that has already come out. Basically, essentially. Very little... I don't want to say very little effort has gone into it, but the baseline for the game has already been established. Everything that has led to the development of Revelator, Re Revelator, Revelator has already exist, has already exists as it is. Now I keep stum I stumble over one word and I just start to stumble over all of them. Um, and so when you're looking at this, like, is this worthy of a full priced game? And it ultimately comes down to. How much do you like the story mode? That's where the change is. New story mode, new dialogue, new writing, all that stuff requires money, requires wages to be paid, etc, etc. That is probably where the majority of the price goes in. Localization, uh, voice acting, I, did I already say that? I think I already said voice acting, who gives a shit? All of that shit costs money that you want to get back, right? But here's the problem. I do not care about the story mode. I went through the story mode in XR's sign so that I could get the points necessary to unlock Sin. That was it. I went through the story mode in Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma to unlock Kagura. No other reason, did not pay attention to it, could not even tell you a single sentence that was uttered in that entire story mode because I did not pay attention to it. Now I am not arguing that the story mode should not exist. I am simply saying, in my world, the story mode may as well not exist. So you, if you are asking me to pay for the story mode, why would I? I don't care about it. I don't want it. I don't need it. Thus, the only thing that I can really say to myself is, I would want to purchase this game just to show my support for this company. I may not like everything about it, but I support it. And here's the thing. I don't anymore. It really, it really hit me that like if I had only played Guilty Gear, if I had never played Persona 4 Arena, never played Blaze Blue, never dealt with all these updates, never dealt with the arcade delays, never dealt with having to wait years 
to get games. God forbid you're a fan, you're a huge fan of Persona 4 Arena version 2.0, Ultimax version 2.0, and you really wish you could get your hands on it, but you don't live in Japan. Sucks to be you. You're never gonna get that. I don't know why. I have no idea why. Because as far as I'm aware, Persona 4 Arena sells better than Blaze Blue does. But they're not giving Ultimax 2.0 to anybody but arcades. There's been... I don't know how long it's been specifically, and I'm too lazy to look it up right now. But Central Fiction and Revelator have both been out for a very long time in arcades. And it's still... Actually, I think Revelator dropped today, didn't it? April 26th, I believe, is the release date for that game. I got a decision to make... Um, let me actually, I will check that. Well, no, let me just, hang on. Hang on! Why are you going so damn slow? Come on, internet. You can handle it. So as far as I'm aware, this game came out today, right? That ain't right. Is it right? Shit, that is right. I forgot, for some reason, I got it stuck in my head that... It needed like a month, five weeks to be released before Evo for it to be in Evo. And for some reason, it got in my head that Evo was in June and not in July. So yeah, never mind. Isn't, I guess the release date's probably like May 20-something for Japan and it's June 7th for the United States. So never mind. I don't have a decision to make. I got another month and a week. <laughs> so forget about that shit. Um, but anyway, so if I had only played Guilty Gear, if I had only gone through Guilty Gear XR Sign... And I saw Revelator, and I had enjoyed Sign much more than I currently, you know, have. I would buy it without a second's hesitation. I would no second thoughts whatsoever. Fuck it, I want that game. Sixty dollars, whatever. It's a follow up to a fighting game I liked. The problem is, I have been through this process with Continuum Shifts, Continuum Shift Extend, Chrono Phantasma, and Chrono Phantasma Extend, Persona 4 Arena, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, Unil, now Unist. I have been through this process too many times now to not sit here and be like, dude, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is so inefficient. This is so unacceptable. This is not This is not how a business should run a business. It really just speaks to like, I mean, basically the feeling that I've always had ever since I heard about the first Loc test for the game and how it was only in Japanese arcades. They did not care about anybody that had any opinion outside of Japanese arcades. You're either Japanese or we don't give a shit about you. Now, maybe that's not how it worked, but that is certainly the impression that I got from the process. And it's the same exact thing where it's like, they released Chrono Phantasma Extend, and it took, what, two fucking weeks to announce Central Fiction for arcades? They don't care about the console player base. They don't care about their player base outside of the arcades. They want to keep the arcades rolling in the money and whatever with the console version. Who gives a shit? And that hurts me. Hurts is a little you know, extreme of a term for it, but it really, it seems like disrespectful and just, ah, fuck it, we can make a little bit of extra money here, so why not just make some money? It's purely a business decision versus we really care about the player base of our games and we want to support it. That kind of a thing. So it gets to that point where it's like, all right, they clearly don't give a shit about me, so should I give a shit about them? Should I keep giving them money? And it's gotten to the point now where, again, it's happened enough where I'm starting to hit that point where I'm like, no, no, it isn't worth it. <laughs> and it really struck me how unconsciously negative I was toward Arc System Works when I heard about the announcement of the Blaze Blue Central Fiction arcade release. The first thing I thought, the first thing I wrote down, and I have since deleted it, I wish I had not so I could just read it verbatim so you could know, but it was basically along these lines. Blaze Blue Central Fiction console version announced, Japanese console version announced for fall 2016. English release will be summer 2017. European release will be spring 2019. Steam release will be spring 2020. And I say that very matter-of-factly, but I meant it in, you know, like, very pessimistic terms. But I didn't do it intentionally. That was just immediately where my mind went. I did not sit there and think, let me just make up these dates to be the most over-exaggerated negativity possible. That is just what flowed out what seemed, you know, like moderately realistic in light of how their release schedule has been in the future, in the past. And the thing is, is that it actually is realistic, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. 
but it is. And again, I don't know if I have to divorce the business side of the game from the game itself. If I bought the game, I know with absolute certainty I would not consider it a waste of money and I would enjoy my time with it. On the flip side of that, when I purchase that game, the moment I hand over my money in order to buy that game, I am blatantly saying, I have su I support you. Everything that was behind this. It doesn't matter what I say. It's the same exact thing. You know, that age-old saying of do as I say, not as I do kind of a thing where I'm expecting you to, like, respect my opinion on something. But then I go, you know, like, it's it would be like me saying fast food is terrible for you. You shouldn't have it. It's too fattening. The continued support of the fast food industry is harming the nation on a whole. And then the next day you see me in McDonald's chowing down on a Big Mac. Right? Like, it's hypocritical. You cannot respect somebody's opinion if they can't even stand by their own opinion. And that is where I am at right now. We're like, I mean, obviously I'm not a national spokesperson or anything like that that needs to have that respect. But it still comes down to a point of like, if I do this, regardless of whether or not I say I don't like it, I support it the moment I give them my money. But I don't support it, and I don't want to support it. Thus, I shouldn't support it. But I want to because I want to play the game, <laughs> and it sucks. Try it's that whole. It's actually one of the most comparable things I can think of is music. There are so many musicians that are complete and utter pieces of shit, and yet their music is so goddamn good. And so you have to sit there like, I really, really like this song, but I don't want to give this dude money. Let's just pretend pirating doesn't exist for a second but i don't want to do this, give this dude money fuck that man they don't deserve i don't you know i can't appreciate this while i'm sitting here thinking like man this dude is like one of the biggest pieces of shit in the entire history of the world history of the world might be a little extreme but this dude's a piece of shit and i don't want to like his music but the music is so catchy that kind of a thing it's the same exact comparison and so I gotta come I gotta come to a decision. But it really is just kinda like I just I see that and it's like, why? Why is this sixty dollars? I would now and the thing is too, if they released a console version of the game. I know actually one of the arguments I just wanted to kinda catch on that I wanted to kinda think about and I wanted other people to think about and give me their opinions on. One of the excuses I always see about how the massive time difference between the arcade version release and the console version release, Arc System Works needs to make money off of the arcades. They need to get a return off of that first before they can release it in con on consoles, otherwise nobody will play it at the arcades. Here's the thing that confuses me about that. The console gaming community as a whole in Japan is damn near dead. They are so huge on mobile stuff whether it's phones uh you know the vita is actually successful there the 3ds tablets iphone you know like whatever that shit is huge there console games no you will almost you will very rarely see console games making it onto like making a splash basically versus like yokai watch will sell millions of copies and then, you know, a console game comes out that's actually, like, really, really good. And you'll see, like, 30,000 copies sold. Something like that. Japan does not really have a console gaming scene. So I kind of really have to think, like... Would having a console version of this game really affect the arcades? Because, number one, you cannot simulate... Arc there is no game yet that has come out that can simulate an offline experience of the same degree. Now, there are some game types that it, it's not really required to have, you know, like a super fast connection, you don't need it. But for fighting games, hell yes, you need a damn good connection in order to have an even moderately playable match. You can't, and it's still, no matter how good the netcode is, no matter how close it is to perfect, it will never actually be the same quality as an offline connection would be. So, you also have to factor that in where a lot of people care about that quite a bit. A lot of people would rather play offline 
than online, and arcades are a very, very convenient place to congregate and play those games that you love. Thus, I don't think it would have that big of an impact if they released them closer together. But, I don't know, I don't have any official numbers myself, I don't even know how their business works over there, how it, you know, like if they get a cut of every single game played, uh, or if they just, you know, sell the machine and they have like a monthly upkeep on that machine or whatever, and then once the arcades stop making less money off of it than the uh, monthly upkeep is. They just get rid of it or something like that. Like, I don't know how it works. I, I do not know. Um, but I still, I really, I'm skeptical about how realistic that argument is. But it's still, just, if they released, like, if they released the story and the game itself separately, so it's like $20 for the game and then, you know, like 15, 10, $15 for, you know, like story mode whatever else on top of whatever extras they want to add on to it i would bet money initially there would probably be riots because people are very very like if you released just the full package at forty dollars everybody would be happy but if you released everything but story mode at 30 and then sold story mode as ten dollars dlc people would lose their shit even though i would completely and utterly agree with it because ultimately i mean obviously you're paying the same amount it's just how it's perceived um but I, I don't know, I'm going on too long about this. I just, I wish that I did not have to, that I did not feel these things. And that I could just enjoy the game for the game, rather than, you know, sitting here and thinking about all this extra business bullshit on top of it. But I can't, I can't divide it. And it makes me sad. So anyway, thank you for listening to me rant for 36 minutes. Hope y'all are having a lovely time and catch you next time.